So we're here at ARM at Mobile World Congress 2010. And what are you showing here? So this is a mobile payments demo. That what we're showing is how easy transactions will be, any value transactions, whether you're in a shop or online. So I'll start here. This is a, imagine this is a point of sale terminal at a retail high street and uh, I'm offered to buy a high def TV. So I fill my basket with high def TV and the checkout assistant says, okay, right, let's check out, get your payment. So it's quite a high value, it's just under a thousand euros. Yeah. And I'm gonna pay with my phone. Now, it's quite a high payment. I want to enter the password so that this phone payment will be protected. So I'll authorize the payment. And when I enter my PIN, the phone yeah. goes into a secure mode. So Android is switched out and a secure OS is switched in. As secure I, OS. As I enter my PIN, the secure OS captures that directly from the keypad, encrypts it. As I press OK, it passes it back to Android. I place my phone on the point of sale counter and Payments made. Payments made. That's amazing. But uh, so Android is not secure enough. So Android is an open OS that can run any application, and openness and flexibility are very difficult things to make secure. So what we do is separate out the problem. We separate it by having two OSs in one chip. So a very very small OS that is certifiable. And, and that is what the, the banks and the payment companies like because they can manage their risk better. So it's certifiable, it means like it's super encrypted several times, or how does it work? Well, certification basically means they can manage their risk so they understand exactly how they can trust the technology. So it's, it's things like encryption techniques, key hiding, uh, isolation mechanisms that um, security guys love. That's what we're providing here. So, so it means that this little OS for payments is a proprietary close kind of thing? Yeah, like in, the, closed, in right? the same way as uh, your bank card. Yeah. Uh, in, if you're a European, you have a bank card that's a smart card. It has an OS in there. It's a secure yeah. OS. That's uh, for very good reasons, not an open OS. Nice. And so what happens there? What is the connection between those two? Is it the... So this is showing uh, near-field payments. There's a near-field communications interface here. This is just a near-field communications reader. So it's not Bluetooth, or it's not something that's in the current phones? No, no, Near, near Field is a very short-range communication protocol, like the, the Oyster card system in the UK. Some credit cards now have contactless interfaces. It's like well. RFID? Yes, yep. kind of like RFID, but secure. Okay. It's, uh, it's the contactless interface to a smart card. It's secure? It's, it's secure. secure. It's secured, yeah. And could, could you like uh, put it like a sticker on the phone? and uh, add it to any phone? Would that be secure enough? Or would it have to be inside the phone? Is that better? Well, with, with, a, with a sticker, you don't get the connection to the user interface to do the user authentication. And this is what we're showing here, is the user authentication, getting the secret that only the user knows into the system so that they can authorize a payment. So when you, when you enter the password, it had to be connected with the near field technology. You, you can't like enter the password and send it over the internet securely. No, no, you, you can. It, you can. It, it's, it's any communications in, interface, so exactly over the internet is fantastic because what we can bring is a high level of authentication to an online transaction. So what yeah. this means is that all of the, the pain that you have when you go to check out online, entering pages and pages of information and extra security checks, we can remove those because we've got a very strong authentication of you as a user. So we can yeah. bring a click and pin experience yeah. to payments on the internet. But, so we but, can make internet payments better on ARM processes. But what I'm wondering is all these uh, smartphones that are on the market right now, like the iPhone and the Nexus One, for example, uh, could they have some kind of new firmware that adds this extra OS and be able to make this with just with a sticker? Uh, without having to get a new phone? It, it, it's not something that you can add to the existing handsets. It does need to be integrated right from the beginning, right from the start to get that This system has to. That's like a, a definitely requirement, right? It, for this, this solution. This, this is solving a lot of problems for everybody on the internet. And, and all of the problems come back to username and password is not the strongest authentication mechanism. We need something stronger. Uh, you know, you, where, everywhere you go, you're asked to pick a username and password, so most people pick the same one, yeah. and therein lies the weakness. Nice. Uh, so, this kind of OS, uh, when you are in this uh, mode where it's uh, the new OS is launching the secure one, mm -hmm. uh, would there be any way that some, some uh, kind of 
evil people would make something that looks like that and makes people think they're entering the password and something and they could somehow hijack a account yeah. or something. Is that possible? So e even if you're tricked into giving up your password, you could, the password is only good for this device and it's only good if you're actually pressing the buttons. So it can't, if, if software takes the password, it can't use it to make a payment. It has to be a person pressing buttons on the, on the device that authorizes the payment. So only for this device, only for that payment? Yeah, your device is personalized to you, to your account. Right. Does that have anything to do with those small calculator kind of things that people have in the bank when they do net banking to security you have access to that? What is the kind of similarity with that? Right, so we can get rid of those devices by running a trustworthy application in the phone so you don't have to carry two devices around, you just have one, a trustworthy handset that can do the same thing. So when you buy the handset, it's trustworthy at that point? You know that it's a reliable place you buy it from? It's trustworthy at that point, and that's where our security partner, G&D, can step in and provide security as a service and deliver security services to banks and payment organizations that want secure users' so devices. this is a new launch, and you're just joining it for the first time here? Or? So this is the, the first integration of G&D's MobiCore on a chip, on Qualcomm Snapdragon. Yeah. And, uh, we announced a couple of weeks ago that we were working with GND to provide security architecture, um, and this is the first result of that collaboration: is a, a mobile core running on a real piece of silicon. Right, and it takes, might take a few months before something comes it, out. It'll take a few months for device manufacturers to integrate this, um, but we're talking with several device manufacturers throughout this show. Uh, been incredible response, and we'll see what happens. So there's a, a graphic showing what it is. So this is where you have a, a rich OS, this would be something like Android. And here you have MobiCore sat next to Android running on the same system on chip. Inside MobiCore you have secure containers running trustlets. And these can contain uh, virtual security tokens that uh, kind of like smart cards can get you logged into your secure service and there's very strict isolation, hardware isolation between the two, separating them, and very strong hard, uh, software isolation between every service provider's trust that inside MobiCore. So it's like if you put this little calculator device inside the phone in terms of hardware, like totally securely. Yeah, so your, cal your calculator type device would be an application sat on top of MobiCore. It'd be a, tr a calculator type trustlet. And, uh... Is it within the same chip or not? Is hardware is separated? How is that? Yeah, so a trust zone chip lets you run two OS's and you think of, think of it like a 33-bit processor. You've got one extra bit that tells uh, the, the processor if the data on the bus is for the MobiCore system or the rich OS. Um, the rich OS can't access data that is tagged specifically for the secure OS. So that's what gives you a very strong hardware isolation. It also means that we can bring the keypad peripheral and connect it straight to MobiCore so it doesn't, the keypad data entry doesn't go through Android. So when you are entering a PIN, Android doesn't see it doesn't, what goes on the keypad. Impossible right. to see so, what's going so on. So the, the keypad is directly connected through a trusted path in hardware to a trusted software where a trustlet in here can encrypt it and then pass it back to Android for, for whatever wherever it needs to send it to a server or a secure element inside the handset. And this could be not only for payments, but also for uh, logging into your email or anything? Anything that needs authentication. Anything with strong yeah. authentication with solve username and password pane. Facebook. Right. If people want to have secure access to that, they can enable it maybe. They could. Right. If, if, yeah. if people want to do that and they want to access the services conveniently, so. Okay. You don't have to type in username and password. You can click on a link, enter a PIN, and you're Just in. Just a PIN. Just a PIN. Just a PIN. So you don't need to look at the number and uh, type it in, and then get another number and type it in. Well, that, that just creates friction for your users. And with this, there's no, there's no need for that, because you've got security end-to-end uh, -end that, that can match. Just a PIN, four numbers. Yeah, to authenticate you as the user. You, the d device can authenticate to the service through this system as well. Sure.